We welcome you to the final event of the 2022 season, the AVP Pro Series Central Florida Open here at Hickory Point Recreation Park on the shores here of Lake Harris. I'm Dane Blanton alongside Rich Lamborn. We'll be calling the action all day today. But for the player intros, let's head down to the sand to Mark Sherman. Hello there. It is time for match number two out of six here on a sunny December morning in Tavares, Florida. Uh, how we doing, y'all? How we doing out there? We doing good? We doing good? I see that monster block sign getting ready to go. We're going to bring that out today. Uh, yes, it's going to be a fantastic day on this gorgeous sand of Hickory Point Beach. We have got four players ready to come on out here looking to make it to their first ever semi-final in the pro series on the avp tour and let's meet him shall we this first young player out of indianapolis i i have such a love for indianapolis now i spend all my christmases there i'm there like three or four times a year it's, it's an amazing city it's an underappreciated city but i love i love that we got a player from indianapolis another player from india ladies and gentlemen let me hear it for miss carly scott and her partner out of Covington, Louisiana. Man, the state of Louisiana, who knew? Who knew Louisiana was just so dang good in beach volleyball? Yeah, making it happen, absolutely. You got California, you got Florida. Now add Louisiana to that list of incredible states for beach volleyball. Give it up for Katie Dickens. And their opponents, this first player playing her college volley, UCLA, the national champion, everybody. And she is on a mission for the semifinals here on the AVP. It's Savvy Simo. Go, Bruins. And her partner from another UC, Cal Berkeley, up north. And she is so focused, dedicated for the last number of years. Jess Gaffney, <laughs> she's ready to go. Get her out there. Let's get this game going. So we're all set to go. A spot in the semifinals on the line. Number seven, Katie Dickens and Carly Scott taking on. Number nine, Jessica Gaffney and Savvy Simo. Should be a great matchup, Rich. Ready to go. Big things on the line. What do you see in this one? We'll get Rich back in a second here, but we are off and running. This one should be very interesting. Both these teams have one loss. They're trying to battle their way back in the contender's bracket. Tournament started on Friday. It's been a long weekend. And now for all four of these players, maybe one of the most important matches they have ever played an opportunity to get into that semifinal. There's a look at Carly Scott with the serve. She runs to the net. Gaffney with a hit, cross court. And here's Savvy Simo. While still alive, Simo's gonna have another opportunity to put that away and not just yet. And finally, a big glass cross court by Dickens. Scott fishing that one out of the net. And look at that, big hit. Third tournament as partners for Dickens and Scott. Katie Dickens and Carly Scott coming out on fire here. They're up three to one. Have played well all weekend long. And all weekend we've had some absolutely spectacular weather. Very still, breeze, very hot. And there's an ace serve. That ball shanked way behind the banner. So Dickens and Scott out to an early four point lead.
72 degrees. 72% humidity. So, nice and sticky. But if you play volleyball, you understand a nice little breeze is absolutely perfect. Sunshine. And we're playing late into December. Not sure when the last time that ever happened. 15 events on the AVP Tour this year. And this, the final one. Great hit down the line. And make it 5-2. So Dickens and Scott really on their game. Really consistent here out of the gate. Sounds like we got Rich, we got Rich back. We're having a little <clears throat> technical difficulties with his mic. Rich, you there? Yes, sir. Sorry, buddy. All right. No worries, no worries. Dickens and Scott off to a hot start uh, as I was at you earlier. What do you think the key is to this one? Yeah, I, you know, they've been, uh, pretty physical in their play, right? We saw them yesterday a little bit, and if they can maintain that, I think they're gonna do quite well in this match. You, you know, you would give the edge on experience, I think, to Simo and Gaffney, of course, but uh, execution always the number one factor, as we know, Dan. 6-3 today, Carly Scott donning that Lakers shirt. Yesterday, I believe she was in a Indiana Pacers shirt. Not sure the backstory on that one, but definitely a, a big NBA fan. You know anything about that, Rich? I, I don't. I thought the Pacers was a nod to her, where she hails from in Indianapolis, but I don't know how that uh, rolls into a Lakers fandom. <laughs> well, she's from Indianapolis, as you said. She resides now in Venice. So maybe she's just repping her residence now. We'll have to get the uh, backstory on that. But she is <clears throat> kind of becoming known as her trademark, those those shirts that she represents. And uh, it's fun to see everybody's different style out there. It's Carly Scott. She's 25 years of age, six foot one, played for Michigan. Comes Gaffney. Yeah, she brings it cross court, and there's really narrow, starting to narrow the gap, starting to get going here for Gaffney and Simo, and just in their second AVP tournament as partners. Here comes Scott from the outside. Roll shot is dug. Gaffney's going to go in the corner, and Scott tries to go over on one. Not the right decision there. Way too far off the net. That's something we saw a lot out of them yesterday, right? But as always, decision-making, the key in that attempt, and that was, as you said, not the right time. A lot of bounds, we take a turn, switch on increments of seven, so no one has an advantage due to the wind or the sun, but... Uh, as we mentioned earlier, not much of a breeze. So both sides pretty solid. Jessica Gaffney, 26 years of age, playing with Savvy Simo, as we said, for the second time in her career. Gaffney out of Temecula, California. Played her college ball at San Francisco. And then at Cal on the beach, there's a big hit cross court, but that one is way out of bounds. So make it nine to six, Dickens and Scott. Scott decides to go to Dickens and that serve is long. 
Rich, what do you think of the strategy going to Gaffney? Simo, obviously, with a lot of ball control, it seems like they're trying to stay away from her. Yeah, and, and you know, sometimes if uh, if it's all the same between the players, you go after Gaffney because she's a blocker, she's got to run up, maybe you can wear her down a little bit, who knows. Uh, but Dickens and Scott have been, as we saw in their match yesterday against uh, Khan and Ketty, they were pretty consistent in their strategy, so look for them to stick with that here. There's Gaffney with a nice little roll shot over the net to the open court. Make it 10 8. Kind of unusual to have such calm conditions in a, a Florida tournament, don't you think, Dan? Yeah, I think that's the, the big thing is that it's not on the coast directly. And I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, I guess, blockage. See all the trees and kind of, kind of protect it a little bit rather than being on the water. Usually the water is where you get that breeze. Big hit by oh. Gaffney. And Scott and Dickens can't handle that one. Yeah, great effort to try and shovel that one back over, but ultimately falls on the sand. There's a look at Savvy Simo on the right there, two-time national champion from UCLA. Just a, a, a scrappy player, played indoor as well as beach at UCLA, and just a tenacious player. You're always gonna get full effort out of her, and she's becoming quite the AVP professional. Gaffney with the serve, she gets to the net quickly. Dickens. And there is Simo over Scott for the point, and that lead continues to shrink for Dickens and Scott. Yeah, perfect kind of beach volleyball play right there, right? Perfect dig from Simo, great set for Gaffney. Easy knuckle pokey over the top. Why again, the official water of the A. We look at Carly Scott there on the left as we take a look at the brackets. The road to the women's final. The number one seated team, Emily Day Capers now. And Gina Urango already sitting in the semifinals, as is Carly Khan and Jen Ketty. And so they are sitting pretty, waiting for the winner of this one. And then on the outer courts, Harward and Reeves going up against the number 12 seeded Rice and Wopat. The winner of that will take on Khan and Ketty. And wow, that's a, that's a big match right there. So a big opportunity, Rich, for a lot of these players because some of the top te teams in the world from the United States were in Australia this weekend. So you, you got to really capitalize on opportunities like this. Yeah, and our American women were very close to a podium sweep down under. <laughs> got an all USA final and then uh, Cloth and Nuss just lost a close one to the, the hosts, Maria Faye and Taliqua of Australia, the bronze medal. Yeah, an absolutely awesome finish by the Americans down in Australia, as Rich was saying. And that was a victory for Sarah Hughes and Kelly Chang. Second place was Julia Scholes and her part, new partner, Betsy Flint. And in third place, it was Australia taking down the LSU girls who finished a very respectable fourth place. That was Kristen Nuss and Taryn Cloth. So United States very well represented. That would have been quite the feat, Rich. Sweeping the podium, that's something that hasn't been done in some time. Yeah, not, not an easy feat by any means. And uh, congratulations to all our American girls over there. Back-to-back -back wins in Australia for Hughes and Chang. So their partnership 
or their reconnection, let's say, off to a, an incredible start. Nice little poke shot over the top by Carly Scott to the corner. And, and Rich, you're very in tune to the international game. A lot of news being made when Kelly Chang and Sarah Hughes got back together. Of course, they had so much success at USC and initially on the AVP tour before going their separate ways. How well are they playing and are they the front runner on the women's side? Uh, well, you would have to think so right now. I mean, they were both uh, forming solid pairs apart. And then, you know, I, I would I would consider Kelly Chang our our top American blocker right now. And uh, certainly Sarah Hughes is one of, if not our best defender. So on paper, that combination is very, very formidable. And they're showing that on the court. They've got all the reps and all the years of history together. So you got to like their chances. Then it just comes down to uh, chemistry on the court, which we know they certainly have are the things that led them to separation initially in the past. Will they resurface? We'll get our popcorn and we'll find out. Yeah, I guess that's the biggest wow. question. Uh, will they gel? Will the, the magic still be there? And so far, the answer is an astounding yes. And it's just a matter of keeping it up. Harward and Reeves trailing 11 to 15 to Rice and Wopat out on court number one. A huge opportunity here for all four of these players. Only player on that court with an AVP victory would be Haley Harward. USC graduate won her first event this year. With fellow Trojan Tina Gradina, and that took place in Fort Lauderdale. But for, I believe, everybody else out on that court, if they can win this one, get to the semifinals, that could be a personal bet for sure. Make it 12 to 15. Haley Harward, far side, serving it up. Kelly Reeves at the net as a blocker. Here comes Wopat, cross court, and just unleashes at Haley Harward. Not even Haley could corral that one. And so, as you see, the winner of that advancing, and well as the winner of this one in the semifinal. So almost the exact same score on our outer court, Dickens and Scott, keeping that slim lead. They had a great start. Then it was 11 to 10 at the technical timeout. Now they've opened up a three-point lead. Yeah, just good consistency in their game throughout here in this first set so far for Dickens and Scott. Dickens right there gets that ball to fall. And Dickens, formerly Katie Lindelow, her mother Melissa played volleyball at both New Orleans and Southwestern Louisiana. And she's got a sister who played at Tulane and she played four years at LSU. She played on the indoor team as well as the beach team the actual inaugural beach team at LSU that made it actually to the national championships. Roll shot dug up by Dickens. And he makes a pay cross court right there. Dickens really good, Rich, at converting. Uh, indeed. Yeah, we've seen them. We talked about their physicality. She just, I, I really like the aggressive swing there in transition. They're going for points. Get after it. And Scaffney blocked by Scott. And that ball unable to be controlled. So 13 to 17, Dickens and Scott holding on to this lead. It looked like she was trying to tuck that in the corner, right? But so difficult to control when it's rattling your partner's hands and coming with some pace. Oh, what a great sell by God. Big double arm lift, looking like she's going to hit the ball, and then she just drops it short past the blocker. Gaff 
the tight set, but the athleticism of Savvy Simo putting that one away. Good job cleaning up the pass that got a little close to the net. Another roll shot over. This one handled by Simo and Gaffney. Scott's going to have another shot. Roll shot scooped up by Simo. Look how quick she's moving in the backcourt. And then unleashing down the middle for the point. Great play by Simo. Yeah, that was a nice look at it there on the replay. She covered a ton of court to get to that line shot. Savvy Simo, fifth place, her best finish on the AVP. She's done that a couple times. Her partner, Gaffney, getting an ace, a much needed ace, making it 16 to 18. And Dickens and Scott will call a timeout and think about this before before it gets a little too tight, just a two-point lead, but they're just three points away from sealing this first set. And so important to win the first set, Rich. Gives you so much confidence. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't know what the exact statistic is, but your, your likelihood of winning the match if you take the first set is monumentally higher than if it goes the other way, of course. Uh, right. This is something we didn't see much of yesterday, though, is Scott getting tested offensively. Uh, Khan and Ketty went almost exclusively after Dickens uh, in their victory here on Stadium Court. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if that's how the strategy shifts for Gaffney and Simo and then how Scott stands up to that. Why does he have already have a really good name? Yeah, you're absolutely right. She did not get tested yesterday. It was her partner. And today she's definitely getting her money's worth and uh, controlling the destiny. And she's done a great job so far, looking very comfortable on the left side. Every time she comes in for the approach, can they hang on here and get to 21 and lock up this first set? Jessica Gaffney. Back to serve out of the timeout. We'll jump float. She continues to go to Sky. Oh, Scott just having her way. How about the set by Dickens? Yeah, great set. And that's uh, that's the response you like to see from Scott, right? Had a couple soft line shots picked up prior to that swing. Comes back aggressively and just tees off at the angle. Nineteen sixteen. Dickens serves Gaffney. Gaffney dug in the backcourt by Dickens. And now it's Simo. When she gets opportunities, she usually makes you pay. And that's exactly what happens right there, even with a set about seven feet off the net. Simo taking care of business. Yeah, some great pop on that swing. Savvy Simo, just a really quick player, an aggressive player, fantastic defender in the backboard. Another ball hit at cross court, and it's going to be Gaffney. Was there a touch? Yes, there was. So a huge point right there. Yeah, a huge point. And maybe a, a bit of a missed opportunity for Scott Dickens midway through that. Good dig from Dickens in the backcourt. It was it was the part of the rally prior to that, but wasn't able to get a hittable set. And Gaffney and Simo make them pay. Roll shot completely anticipated by Savvy. Oh, what a set. 
God cannot put it away. And then over on one, and it is effective right there. So Dickens taking a risk move going over on the first contact, but it's successful. Yeah, and going back to what you said there, that set midway through that rally by Dickens was unbelievable. And the key to, to that rally and that uh, the victory of that rally for Dickens and Scott. Yeah, so important to to take risks in transition, put that ball up there. Doesn't do you any good to set your partner 10 feet off the net. Take a risk, especially if there's physical enough so they can have a shot with jousting or, or can really unleash. We're 20 to 18. It is set point for Dickens and Scott. They go to Gaffney. Dickens with the dig. She'll have a swing for the win. And it is good enough. The ball's dug, but they cannot control it. So Dickens and Scott, 21-18 here in the first. Some fireworks early on. Hot start from Dickens and Scott. The AVP is brought to you by KT Tape, helping athletes of all levels train longer and finish stronger. By the official game ball sponsor, Wilson Sporting Goods, bringing you power and performance. Be sure to shop the optics at wilson.com. Waikea Hawaiian Volcanic Water, sustainably sourced and naturally alkaline. Live Aloha, drink Waikea. I'm Carrie Walsh Jennings. I've played with lots of injuries and sore muscles. KT Tape has helped me push past the pain. Today, clinical studies prove what I've always known, that using KT Tape before, during, and after workouts can reduce muscle soreness. Whether it's the Olympics or the local gym, pain is pain. Tape up with KT Tape, the number one kinesiology tape. Use it for muscle soreness and many common injuries. KT Tape, train longer, finish stronger. KT Tape works for me, it'll work for you. On stadium court, a highly contested quarterfinal matchup. The prize, the big semifinals taking place this afternoon. Dane Bland alongside Rich Lamborn. Let's take a look, Rich, at the first set stats. Yeah, and as we saw yesterday, Dickens and Scott putting up great hitting numbers. Uh, everything else pretty level there I would say maybe that's the the slight difference you know they made a couple plays late to maintain their edge uh, complete with some great transition setting from Dickens we are ready to rock. Uh, but this should be a tight one players are all set and ready to get back on the court. Dickens and Scott, just the third time they were playing together on the AVP tour. They got a third place in Virginia Beach, a seventh place in Huntington Beach, both tour series events. This is a 
pro series event and a huge opportunity for them to take care of business. That ball hit off the top of Gaffney and out of bounds. Yeah, Dickens and Scott are best when they're staying aggressive offensively. We saw Scott get tested a little bit, softened up, and, and kind of allowed Gaffney and Simo back into that first set, but then regained form and closed it out. One all here, second set. Gaffney and Simo looking to tie it up here in the second set and possibly push a third set. Dickens and Scott would love to wrap this up in two sets. Great run. And you know how effective Savvy Simo, seems like she's getting her hand on every one of the shots. Has that become a little bit frustrating, Rich? Yeah, it does. That starts to wear on the mind of your opponent. You know, if, if shots don't go down cleanly, uh, you start to have to think about that, right? You start to try and be a little more precise and more precise. And theoretically, anyways, that can lead to some errors. So the effort is usually rewarded defensively when you're uh, covering as much court as Simo. And they continue to go to Carly Scott, who continues to have success. She looks very comfortable signing out. Three to two. There's Carly Scott up at the net. Partner Dickens serving down the line to Gaffney. Gaffney with a nice angle shot right there. Rich, is it just me or does, does Gaffney remind you of Gary Walsh at first glance. Uh, yeah, certainly at first glance. She has kind of the same build, right? Yeah, first one I saw her play, I, I said there's got to be a relation. But uh, I don't know that there is. <laughs> Gaffney would no doubt love to get some of the wins that Carrie's got under her belt. No question about it. Gaffney just 26 years of age. She's six foot one. So she is a presence. There's a good look at Gaffney from the right side. Nice poke shot over Scott for the point. We're all tied at four. Yeah, Gaffney and Simo have a nice rhythm as well here. Now that back set is, is a risky play from that far off the net, but Gaffney and Simo, they ran it well. Five four, ace down the middle by Simo. A serving middle, never a risky play, Dave. Continue to go to Scott. Scott passes that ball far right, but somehow Dickens gets that ball to fall. Perfect location on that shot, just out of reach of Savvy Simo. Great up, great effort right there, but the point is gonna go to Gaffney and Simo. Six five. It's so hard when the ball rattles through the hands of the blocker as a defender to get your hands on that. So a really nice effort from Dickens, but Gaffney serves, she runs to the net, drops at the last minute. Nice play defensively and taking a risk. She's gonna get another opportunity, Gaffney is. And there's Scott. Scott 
Scott goes right to Simo, and we know how Simo loves to terminate. And there she does, cross court, just a thunderous hit. Yeah, there again, you see when Scott softens up, she becomes much less effective offensively. <clears throat> that rally went on for quite some time, and Savvy Simo said, I've seen enough. Terminates that last hit. Here comes Gaffney, jump float, continuing to go to Scott. Got on the outside. Yeah. What a great set once again. Really solid bump setter is uh, Dickens over there on the right side, Rich, just putting it in the sweet spot every time. That yeah, looks that way. Scott paying it off that time. Tough serve over to Savvy Simo. And Dickens, she's going to have an opportunity. I think Gaffney seems to be pulling off the net quite often. I'm not sure if that's a, an effective strategy when you have uh, Dickens who loves to bring it. Yeah, I, I just, I don't necessarily question pulling off the net, but the timing of it where you're off way early and Dickens can see throughout her whole approach that she's got no one there and just load the cannon, as it were. Scott and Dickens all tied up here in the second set. We would consider that a shot, right? Compared to the hammers we've seen from Simo, but still some good pace on that, which you like to see. Dickens on the back line, getting ready to put this ball in play. Goes over to Gaffney. Comes Gaffney. Nice double arm lift. And I like that deep shot to the corner rather than trying to bang that ball straight down. Good high reach. Great swing. Scott continues to be the target. Here's a big scoring opportunity. Over on one by Dickens. She'll rethink that one as they lose the point. You know, you can get away with that to a certain extent. And then you play a team like Gaffney and Simo, and they're going to be ready for that over on one. Yeah, they're is such a thing as going to the well too many times, I suppose, Dan. No question about it. That's something that you use for special occasions when the defense is just not ready to go. Can't use that up a little too much. And there's Scott putting it away. She's, she's really in a groove. You know, if I'm Gaffney and Simo, maybe I switch it up, start to go to Dickens to, to, to test her a little, little bit. But Scott, seems like she's come ready to play yeah the other part of that is right even if Dickens sides out two or three times straight you've theoretically cooled off Scott you know you've given her a, a break chance to disrupt her rhythm a little bit Attack, we'll get it up yeah, I, I totally agree right now. She's just, she seems very comfortable. She's in a group. Carly Scott out of Michigan right there. Full-time blocker at the net. So she'll serve, run to the net. She's also getting served just about every ball, as we mentioned. We'll take the set, Simo. Gaffney with a narrow advantage. 
and Gaffney and Simmo take the lead, and they're up 11-10 at the technical timeout. And leading big, 18-14 towards the end of set number two. They could be three points away. Semi-final. 21-18 in the first, 10 to 11 at the technical, and look at this out on court number one, complete control yeah! right in Wopat, really making things happen. There's a trickler, and make it 19 to 14. So imagine that Rice and Wopat just two points away from advancing to the semifinals. Yeah, and if they, if I saw that correctly, <laughs> we tuned in for the trickle fest. Match point right here. Here comes Harward on the right. And he thunders that ball. Not sure if that's been happening since we haven't seen this match in its entirety, but there's no question about it that Rice and Wopat have been controlling this one, you know, handily 21-15, and they're looking like they may replicate that score in this second set. Backward reverse pokey by Haley Harward, and that one is successful. So make it 20 to 16. And there you see the bracket. Both of these being semifinals. We're back here on stadium court. Dickens and Scott winning first set, tied up 11 all here against Gaffney and Simo. Dickens back to serve, right down the middle. Nice serve, little confusion on the reception, and then Simo hitting right down the middle. Great position there. Didn't have a lot to work with, Rich. Uh, no, that's just a wonderfully placed shot, though. However, went in a fiddle, go deep middle, and all that kind of stuff that we hear all the time. But well executed there from Savvy. Service pressure if you're Gaffney and Simo needs to be turned up right about now. First, they need a side out, all 12 apiece. Here comes Gaffney. Nice high hit. Yeah, she's been doing a nice job of late of keeping that swing high. Another nicely lifted ball, but how about that Dickens not ready to cover right there? That ball was right in front of her. A very easy cover if you're ready for it. What do you think of that, Rich? As a coach, you got to be thinking yeah. that's unacceptable. Yeah, so often, you know, once you set the ball, you get wrapped up in calling the open space for your partner. You forget about the coverage aspect of it. And, you know, I remember growing up watching Karch and Kent. They were so good at that particular play and it saved so many points for your team just by sheer effort. Nice roll shot right there. Here's a look at our bracket. We'll update the bottom. We have a set semifinal. Carly Conan and Getty taking on number 12, Rice and Wobat, who won in commanding fashion in that quarterfinal out on court one. Big surprises, Rich. Yeah, I thought I had that right, that they were the 12 seed. I mean, six versus 12. In our, in one of our semis, that's uh, obviously surprising on paper. Not surprising to either of those teams. Just a huge opportunity for all four of those players in the bottom semifinal.
Gaffney Simo playing together for the second time on the AVP Tour. Fourth time overall. You know, their first two tournaments together on the FIVV Tour. In the Maldives and in Dubai. Then they placed fifth in Huntington Beach about a month ago in that tour stop. And this is their fourth event. So wouldn't that be something if they could get a, a top four finish? Indeed. Now you mentioned the service pressure and how they've got to ramp it up a little bit, uh, but a few too many service errors coming in maybe for both teams right now. Yeah, and I think Rich, they're they're not as tough as they should be if if you're going to miss, right? You want to risk reward. You want to really go for that ace if you're going to go for it. Then you're okay with some of the misses. Uh, I agree with you about the serving, and again, I I'm not sure why, why the pull's happening so early on the side of Gaffney and Simo. That's maybe something to sort out uh, in training, because I don't mind the pull as a defensive tactic, but... Yeah, it's hard. <clears throat> it's hard when it, it looks almost predetermined, right? You got to take in that intel. You got to see where the set is. If it's 50%, you, you got to stay up there because, you know, at six foot one, Gaffney can be a force at the net. Yeah, we've Carlos seen got love Dickens that just given. Yeah, Dickens doing a great job of setting too. So you got to expect good sets coming Scott's way. Seventeen all. Dickens and Scott just four points away. Here comes Gaffney out of the middle of the court, off the block of Scott, and so Gaffney and Simo. There is life. They're just three points away from forcing that third set. Their coach Priscilla Lima giving some direction. She knows the importance of this one. For Savvy Simo and Gaffney, they're, they're right where they need to be. They can push this to a third set. No one, come on! Another open net look for Scott and she makes them pay. Yeah, the, I think the timing of that one was better. She saw the set, pulls late you see there, but again, Scott, so good when she stays aggressive as she did there. She brings a ton of pace and able to put that one away. There's that back set that they love to run. Gaffney very comfortable and going around to that right side has been very successful. Make it 19-18. Yeah, neither team able to get too many inroads defensively here. Gaffney and Simo would love to steal one here. Here comes Gaffney, jump float. Yeah. Up early. Love the effort, 19-19. two takes set two. Going for that one there. I don't think that was legal, but I like the, I like the pursuit by Gaffney. Yeah, certainly not legal, but uh, you do kind of, I don't know, dial yourself in mentally to just give all out effort. So I, I like to see that. I love that. Gaffney, as we mentioned, 26 years of age. Six Interestingly, going to Simo there, testament to the good rhythm that Gaffney's been in. Well 
we'll take a timeout. So we'll get a timeout here. Dickens and Scott will think it over real quick, facing a set point. There's a chance to level this match now for Gaffney and Simo. Uh, they'll chop up their strategy. Coach Pris uh, Priscilla Lima. Then a few Dickens and Scott, you know, I mean, it's just a matter of uh, siding out. Easy to say, not as easy to do when you're facing that set point, but they do have the first set in hand. So the pressure still lies firmly on the backs of Gaffney and Simo. So just think one their dialogue has to just be. Yeah. Well, we get a round of applause, folks, for these four athletes. Come on. Go ahead, Rich. Uh, sorry, I was saying you'd, you'd think their their dialogue just has to be stay aggressive, keep doing what we're doing, get this side out, and see if we can't put some pressure on from the end line. If you're Scott Dickens. It's a good look at Savvy Simo, who will start off this serve. She's playing in her 14th of tournament, seven different partner so continues to look for the right combination great serve right down the middle and an ace to win it and listen to Gaffney she is pumped up and ready to go so we're all tied up the two captains will do the coin flip third set coming up Corner Bakery, we're making your choice simple with choose two options every day. Choose two of your favorites and turn a simple lunch into a perfectly paired meal. And we're not talking about a few choose two options. Pair up any sandwich or panini, any cafe fresh salad or warm simmering soup, or any pan sauteed pasta. So many kitchen crafted options, so little time. Your perfect choose two combination is waiting at the Corner Bakery. Dear Mainland, aloha. My brother and I hear that most of you only disable your phones when you fly. You call it airplane mode. But maybe you don't have to get on a plane to get away, yeah? Allow my brother to demonstrate. You know what we call this? Kona mode. One life, right? Mahalo. Longboard Island Lager and Big Wave Golden Ale from Kona Brewing. Tavares, Florida, the final event on the 2022 AVP Tour, and we have a battle in the quarterfinals here, trying to get to the semifinals. Scott and Dickens winning the first one, 21 to 18, but Gaffney and Simo coming back strong in the second by a narrow margin, 21 to 19. And now it's the third and final set to get to the semifinals. Here's Savvy Simo putting the ball in play. And that's an ace. Two straight aces, one at the end Makes of it back two, to back. At the start of set three, Savvy. What a great serve right there. Nice touch in the corner, but can't control it for Gaffney. And yeah, that was interesting, Rich. An ace serve to end the second set, an ace serve to come out in that third set, and maybe Savvy Simo has figured something out. It's that deep middle that seems to be causing the problems. 
Yeah, perhaps uh, that is, in fact, the case. We talked about needing to apply a little pressure from the end line and Savvy finding a way to do just that. Gaffney owning the net right there. You know, you heard the big roar from Gaffney at the end of the second set. She's into this one, bringing a lot more fire, and I think that's going to really bode well for her in this third set. Yeah, indeed, you like to see the energy on court and kind of as we suspected, this one was going to be close and it was going to come down to execution. And that's kind of what we saw go in favor of Gaffney and Simo at the end of the second set. Be interested to see how it shapes up here in the third. Dickens with a nice roll shot over Gaffney and out of reach of Simo down the line. And we're all tied up at two. Carly Scott out of Michigan, jump float down the middle. She goes to Gaffney. Gaffney taking a rip, but that ball is just out of bounds. Gaffney and Simo hitting 652. They have one block, a couple of aces, and five service errors. So you kind of take that ratio right there. Almost two to one on errors, but those points are big. Yeah, and especially if you could dial up the ace to win the second set, right? It's uh, the timing oftentimes of, of those stats is also very important. Uh, but you can see from the hitting numbers that neither team really finding a way to impose their will defensively too much in this match so far. Wow. Gaffney gets that ball to fall. She just kind of hit it over. She could have used three contacts, but nonetheless, the ball hits the sand for the third point. And remember, this is a quick one to 15. Switch on increments of five. Not a lot of time for a comeback here, so you want to keep it close. Nice float serve by Simma. You know, when, when Gaffney's dropping, she's got to really make it a priority to get that high ball to the corner because it seems like that's where she's getting beat. Uh, well, certainly, I mean, none of these players putting the trajectory on it where they're going to bounce it in front of you as a retreating blocker, right? So you got to be ready to play that, that high one for sure. So make it five to three, Dickens and Scott. Yep, really a good decision on the overall one that time. You know, when when you're there defensively already, the ball comes right to you and you got a little bit of control. That's a good time to do it as we saw from Dickens. Scott follows it up with a great block. And the fire, that's the most we've heard from an enthusiasm level from Scott and Dickens. There's a big hit by Simo. It's Doug. Dickens is going to have an opportunity to score yet again and make it 7-3. So completely dominating right now in this third set is Dickens and Scott. How about that swing, Danger, as we get a look at it there? I mean, pretty well off the net and just kind of smoothly strokes it to the sideline there. Beautifully done by Dickens. Yeah, we, we, you know, we saw a lot of that from Dickens yesterday, just really bringing the heat from five, seven feet off the net, not really uh, caring where she is, but she, she hits the ball at a, at a real high point and gets the most out of her swing. Gentlemen, Kyle Friend, Tim Brewster, undefeated to this point. They'll take on Triborn and John Hyden on outer board number one. Next on stadium, there's a good look Kyle at Priscilla Lima, former AVP pro, now coaching many athletes and has a club in Florida and does many clinics. One of the great coaches. 
taking a look at our lineup next men's semifinal number eight palm and rafu rodriguez taking on number two crab and dollhauser then at 12 20 capers and Urango, they will take on the winner of this one right here. And then we'll have the men's final at 2 o'clock local Eastern time and the women's final at 3 o'clock. So a lot of volleyball on tap for you today. And it could get very interesting. Here we go. 7-3 to three, Dickinson Scott up in the third set. <laughs> Seems like both Dickens and Scott want to hit that ball over on that first contact or the second contact, even if the ball's deflected from the block. Interesting strategy. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some merit to that strategy as a rally extends, right? You just kind of try and wear down your opponent. If you can just keep shoveling it back over the net. There's Gaffney trying to cut into this lead as she goes back to serve. Played her indoor ball at the University of San Francisco, played beach at Cal. And every time she steps on the court, becoming a better and better player. That high shot by Scott. I was going to say, wow, she's got that dialed in this entire match, but she finally makes an error. That one just a little bit long. A three to zero run. It was seven to three. Now it's seven to six. Gaffney and Sima looking to tie it up here on this one. Got roll shot. It's interesting that Simo hasn't locked into that high line shot because we haven't seen a lot of a sharp cutty out of Scott. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we've seen any cutty. She kind of hammers angle or goes to that line shot. She's been good swinging away. It's been a little hit or miss, I feel like, on that line shot, quite frankly, but uh, she finds the range there. Poke shot dug up by Dickens. That set too close. Got with a great play right there. Looked like a broken play, but then she just rips it cross court. Yeah, great dig there, and a really nice job to get the ball back from Dickens. So just like that, a broken open a three-point lead. It was down to one. Gafti and Simo had an opportunity to tie it, but now it's nine to six. So Dickens and Scott edging closer and closer to that 15th point. Six away. And that ball's out of bound by Gaffney. And so make it 10 to six. Yeah, a couple of errors creeping in on the side of Gaffney and Simo, really contributing to the lead for Scott Dickens. And Gaffney and Simo will take that any day of the week right there, serve into the net. So basically a free point, make it seven to 10. But now's where you gotta really have to lock in. Gaffney and Scott Sipmo have been playing really well, but they're going to have to eliminate any errors and capitalize on all opportunities. Just cannot get that ball put away. Third opportunity. Not yet. It's Scott who throws it away. So, wow, Rich, talk about opportunity. Yeah, big opportunity there, but really well seen at the end there. You can see Scott delay, knowing the soft shot's coming and just swat it back. I mean, you get that many opportunities. If you're Stimo and Gaffney, you have got to put it away. 11-7. And another free point. 
make it 11-8. You got to be thinking if you're Gaffey and Simo, we got to get to nine here. Get a switch at 11 to nine and we're in good shape. Scott. Nice dig by Gaffney. She's going to have an opportunity to score, and she absolutely unleashes with a beautiful set by Stimo. Yeah, great play all the way around. Good dig, great set from Simo, and that good aggressiveness from Gaffney to put that ball away with some authority. Eleven to nine, Dickens and Scott with a narrow two-point edge. They would love to get a side out right here. Simo and Gaffney have other plans. Gaffney gonna serve, run all the way up to the net. Tough serve. There's some trouble. And that ball is out of bounds. So we asked for a little more service pressure, Rich, and it seems like we're getting it. Yeah, this is how Gaffney and Simo were able to level this match at the end of the second set. So maybe they're going to find some service pressure just in time here in the third, down a couple. Look at the players in their box. Not a lot of communication going on right there between Scott and Dickens, taking a listen to their coach. And they're still in the driver's seat. Although by the look, they are very focused and know that the pressure's on. There's a look at our women's champions here on the 2022 AVP Pro and Gold Series. It started off with the LSU girls, Taryn Cloth and Kristen Nuss really picking up where they left off. They won their first event back in 21 in Atlanta. So they started strong. And then so many storylines throughout the year. Therese Cannon, Sponsor winning in Hermosa, Gradina in Harvard and Fort Lauderdale. Skulls in Urango winning for the first time in Atlanta. And then of course, Sarah Hughes, Kelly Kalinske. And then how about the last two there, Rich? Cloth starting strong, Cloth and Nuss, and finishing extremely strong, winning Chicago and then AVP championships in Phoenix. Yeah, a great deal of parity on the men's and the women's side. Lots of different winners, but uh, Cloth and Nuss doing a nice job bookending the season. Some victories. Back to action. There's that line shot once again. Haven't really adjusted the defense to it and make it 12 to 10. So time running out. Nice. Yeah, kind of set a little more body. towards the middle of the court. Nice pass by Gaffney out of the middle of the court. Doug. By Dickens, gonna be a free ball opportunity here for Gaffney. Good pass, set is off the net a little bit. And Gaffney doesn't know where the ball is there that Simo got it up and that's a huge point right there for Dickens and Scott. Yeah, certainly. Nice job in the backcourt from Simo to keep it off the sand, but just unable to control it and Gaffney got caught in the laundry a little bit. Spin cycle. Yeah, that's why you never want to take your eye off the ball right there. It's hard to, to retrace and track it. She didn't think that ball was coming up in the backcourt. Nice pass here. We're going to get it. That free ball's got to be passed a little closer to the net, but Gaffney still able to get out of trouble. I think like Gaffney, you know, kind of likes a little adversity. Doesn't like quite the per perfect pass. And, you know, she does well when it's kind of a broken play. It will be Yeah, we could uh, argue maybe semantics there. Do I like adversity or do I do well in adversity because I find myself there so much? 
A huge point for Gaffney and Simo. They protect against the line this time. They make the adjustment, and what do you know? They score the point. So it's a one-point ball game here in the third set, quarterfinal action. Giving it all they got for their first wow. semifinal in the Pro Series on the AVP Tour. Yeah, that's kind of that cat and mouse game, right? Maybe Gaffney and Simo were just kind of baiting Scott with the open court knowing that she would go to it late and they could steal one as they did there. So Scott and Dickens looking for a side out. They'd love to get to 14 on this one. Good serve down the middle. Here comes Scott. She goes line and she's blocked again. Come on, Gaffney couldn't ask for much more. And Scott tries to go over on one and pays for it. So it's all tied up at 13. What a rally right there. And Dickens and Scott tying it up at 13. Here comes Simo. Who's gonna get to 14 first? Here's Scott. They defended against her line, and so she goes angle. Simo's there this time. Free ball opportunity. Goes over on one. Just a devastating choice if they don't win this rally. And they don't. Rich, wow. Talk about the table being set. And wow, Gaffney and Simo have to be asking themselves what just happened. Yeah, something we harp on a lot is the decision making involved in that play, and, and that obviously not not the right choice there. And uh, you said the word devastating. If this if this match goes the way of Dickens and Scott, you would have to think that that's a proper description. Yeah, it was wild, Rich. I mean, it was an over on one play, but it was right to the defender who was on that far right line. The entire left side of the court was open. Nonetheless, 14-13, Dickens and Scott, match point, tight set. There's an over on one off of the block deflection. And Simo crushing it from about seven feet off. Yeah, another questionable choice on, on that play, especially with someone as speedy as Sa uh, Savvy Simo on the backcourt. But it's interesting, right? Gaffney and Simo scoring a lot of points in adverse situations. And it seems like the easy ones are call causing them all sorts of problems. 14 all. Here's Gaffney at the net. Scott touches the net and this ball falls. So good decision to drop right there, but they cannot control it. Yeah, a little bit of a lucky break for Dickens and Scott off the top of the tape. She fell in front of Simo on the backcourt. 15-14, Dickens and Scott with another match point. Here comes Gaffney. And puts a little extra heat on this one, and we're all tied up at 15 apiece. Wow. Yeah, good aggressive swing there from Gaffney. Stabby Simo, two-time national champion. UCLA, beach volleyball. She also played indoor volleyball as well. Continues to grow as a beach player and gets better every time. It's 15 all. Third step. And Scott this time puts it away down the middle. I, you know, I really like the adjustment made by Gaffney and Simo on her line shot over the last couple of plays. They kind of took it away and made her do something different. Yeah, that swing angle is, has been effective for her, so well done to go back to it by Scott. 
Gaffney with some athleticism right there, falling into the referee stand and crushing that ball cross court. Just tucking it inside the sideline. Every point, a huge point, 16 all. We're looking for a two point advantage to get a winner. Nice serve down the middle. Really nice set. It's dug perfectly by Simo. And they just cannot seem to get past Carly Scott. She is everywhere. Not only is she getting every serve rich, but she's a force to be reckoned with at the net. Yeah, just a great vision and handwork there from Scott. I mean, seeing that so well, just able to swat it back into the open sand. Match point once again for Dickens and Scott. And there's a tough play in the middle. Here's that adverse situation. Oh, over on one and Gaffney cannot control it and gives it right back to Scott and Dickens. And how about that gift right there? And it's Scott and Dickens who will be victorious and move on to the semifinals. But wow, when Simo and Gaffney watch this tape back, Ridge, they're going to look at so many opportunities where they could have taken care of business. Yeah, so often it is those little plays and who makes them and who doesn't. And especially late after they climb back into this match, they'll they'll sort of kick themselves, you would think, uh, for missing a couple of those critical ones. Yeah, they were, I mean, talk about free balls and then giving the ball right back rather than using those those three contacts. But that's what about it's all about, you know, learning experience, you get better and better. And we've seen Savvy Simo and Gaffney improve every time they step on the court. And so they will finish in the fifth place. And They'll be looking for 2023 as their 2022 season comes to an end. On the other side of the net, Scott and Dickens will advance to the semifinals. And if they keep up this type of play, we're going to be in great shape, Rich. Agreed. Take a look at the stats. They're in the books for the match. 455 to 355. You got your blocks three to two. Everything pretty even, but it's Dickens and Scott that are victorious. Moving on to the semifinal. More beach volleyball coming your way. <laughs> 